In this video, I'm going to show you some of the coolest tech that I've come across over the last few days. So let's get right into it. The first one is this Reverie demo. These are basically like NPCs, non-playable characters, but they interact with each other in a Sims-like world using AI. They actually form relationships with each other. They have discussions. They get to know each other. It's a really, really interesting experiment. And if you come over to their demo here, you can actually watch them interact. And there's a whole cast of characters here. You can click on any character you want at any given time and see what they're up to. Let's click on AS. So AS is Adam Smith. His current action is having a meeting discussing the topic with the other participants. So if we look up here on the screen, we could jump to Adam Smith and you can see he's walking here. Now it looks like he's going to find some coffee or something. If I look down here, his current action, he's taking a break from the meeting. Let's click on IR and find her. She's currently eating some pizza right now. Now these characters, they are taking all of these actions independently. There's nobody instructing them to do anything. They are just wandering around this little world doing actions based on their past memories and a sort of preset personality that was designed for them. And this is based on a paper called Generative Agents, Interactive Simulacra, Simulacra of Human Behavior. And it's actually a really interesting read. Of all of the research papers I've read, this is one that's actually kind of a fun read. We initiate generative agents to populate an interactive sandbox environment inspired by The Sims, where end users can interact with a small town of 25 agents using natural language. So check this out here. In an evaluation, these generative agents produce believable individual and emergent social behaviors. For example, starting with only a single user specified notion that one agent wants to throw a Valentine's Day party, the agents autonomously spread invitations to the party over the next two days, make new acquaintances, ask each other out on dates to the party, and coordinate to show up for the party together at the right time. So these little sim-like characters that are running autonomously with their own sort of built-in AI, they planned a Valentine's Day party, asked each other out on dates, and coordinated to show up at the same time. That's really, really cool, but there's also something kind of creepy about it. A little further down the paper, it explains here that each agent is represented by a simple sprite avatar. We authored one paragraph of natural language description to depict each agent's identity, including their occupation and relationship with other agents as seed memories. So they kind of gave them a little bit of a seed paragraph to start off the personalities, and then everything that happened beyond that sort of happened autonomously. So for example, John Lynn is a pharmacy shopkeeper at the Willow Market and Pharmacy who loves to help people. He's always looking for ways to make the process of getting medication easier for his customers. He's living with his wife, who's a college professor, his son, Eddie, who is a student studying music theory, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes on to give a single paragraph about this person's kind of story and personality. Combine this with the news that Meta created robots that learn from videos of human activities and simulated interactions. And you've literally got the plot of Westworld. These robots could literally take input video footage of an action being taken and then replicate what they have seen on the video. Using the video information, object bounding detection, and various depth maps, they can then recreate the actions that they saw on video. And this technology is put into real robots that are actually moving around and doing these actions. So if we create AI that gives NPCs free will and autonomy, and we have robots that can run around and take actions as they learn stuff, I think that's both exciting and really scary at the same time because this is how the plot of almost every single robot taking over the world movie begins. But at least you and I will be ready for it because we're paying attention. Here's another cool thing I came across from Rick or R-I-K-V-K-0-1 on Twitter. He's basically figured out how to add a long-term memory to chat GPT. So if we take a look at his video here. Okay guys, this is crazy. I just made chat GPT, but with long-term memory, basically anything you say, it's gonna remember and it's gonna make your experience a lot more personalized. Before I already told this guy what my uh, workout routine is. So let's see if he remembers. And he says, you do 100 pushups every two days, okay? So you can see he started a brand new chat here. This is a fresh chat here. And he said, hey, do you know what my workout routine is? And it says, yes, I remember that. So at some point in the past, he trained this chat on what his workout routine is. 
and then asked him to bring it up again at a later time, and the bot still remembered. If you know anything about ChatGPT, it only remembers the context of the conversation directly above it. Two days, okay? Don't judge me, but let's tell him that we're actually increasing this to 200 push-ups now. We're now doing 200 push-ups instead of 100. So now he just gave it some new information. Actually, now I'm doing 200 push-ups every two days instead of 100, and it says, wow, and essentially it's adding that new information to the long-term memory. Let's also tell it that I'm launching a new project called Memory GPT, which is like Chat GPT but with long-term memory. Let's tell that. Let's tell him that. I'm gonna say, wow, cool, all this stuff. But now, to prove that works, I'm gonna open it on a new tab. I'm gonna refresh my my window. So he just added some new information. He started a new tab with a new window and a new chat. And with this new and chat, I'm gonna ask it again if it knows what my workout routine is. Okay. He's asking some of these same questions again now. And now he says, "Wow, you do 200 push-ups, so cool." And let's also ask it if it knows of any projects I'm working on. And he says, "Yeah, you're working on Memory GPT, which is like Chat GPT." So this isn't publicly available, but he does have a wait list on his tweet where you can sign up through a Google Doc, tell him why you want to use it, and he'll get you access. I don't have access to it yet. I just kind of came across this video and wanted to show it off because I thought it looked cool. This one's from Pietro Sherano. He created something called Designer GPT, which is a plugin for ChatGPT. So obviously you need to have access to the plugins feature in ChatGPT to be able to use this. Most people don't have access to it yet. I don't have access to it yet. But once we get access to it, this looks like it'll be really, really cool. It will basically build an entire website for you using ChatGPT. It'll write the code for you. It'll write the copy for you. It'll generate the images for you. Let's just check out this demo video here. So he wrote, generate a website for a beautiful architecture firm. Generate any images you need as well. That was his prompt. So it used the image generator plugin. It used his designer GPT plugin. And then it says, here's the website for the beautiful architecture firm. He clicked on the website, opened it in a new window over here, and you can see it put the title, it put an image, it put about us, it put our services, it put a contact details. It literally did all of that from just generate a website for a beautiful architecture firm, generate any images you need as well. He then types, that was great, can you now give me a portfolio for a portrait photographer? Starts using the image generator plugin, his designer GPT plugin, and then once again it says, here's the portfolio website with a link. He opened this link in a new tab over here, and then it says, please click on the link above to view the portfolio. And you can see here's the portfolio website, portrait photographer portfolio. It generated a couple images about the photographer, generated some copy, put some contact information, and it just generated this entire website from one prompt. And he says, okay, so great, last one. We're going to generate a minimal design agency website. It's using the image generator plugin, using his designer GPT plugin, gives him a new link. He opens it a new tab here, and then welcome to minimal design agency. And it creates this real basic website over here. And on Pietro's Twitter thread here, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see another example of a website that he built with it, where he asked for a fantasy carpet seller website. And it says, here's the website for Aladdin's flying carpets a flying carpet seller from the 14th century. You can visit the website by clicking on the link below. And then this is the website it generated, Aladdin's flying carpets, magical carpets from the 14th century. It generated an image with AI and put some copy down here for his magic carpet. Obviously these aren't the most beautiful websites we've ever seen in the world. They're kind of plain, kind of basic, but as I say, this is kind of becoming a recurring theme in a lot of my videos. This is as worse as it's gonna get. Everything from here just gets better and better. Imagine when these tools are building just completely beautiful, modern, crazy looking websites. Like we're not that far off. So that's a real cool tool from Pietro called Designer GPT. Again, that one's gonna require ChatGPT plus the plugins. Excited to play with that one and see where he goes with it. And then finally, the last one I wanna point out comes from my good buddy, Angry Penguin or AP over on Twitter. And this one's called Scene Dreamer. And this one you can actually play around with right now if you want to. So here's the TLDR. Scene Dreamer learns to generate unbounded 3D scenes from in the wild 2D image collections. Our methods can synthesize diverse landscapes across different styles with 3D consistency, well-defined depth, and free camera trajectory. So basically what it does is it generates these maps, these bird's eye view maps, and then from these maps with all these various types of landscapes, it then generates these 3D scenes that you can travel through. And all of this is created with AI. So here's an example scene that they show off of what these types of landscapes look like. And this started as one of those bird's eye view, top down images 
of just sort of like a topography looking map. And then from that kind of topography map, it generated this visual of the camera, almost like a drone shot flying over the landscape from that topography map. You can see all different types of scenes and styles that they have available for this. And this one, there is a hugging face space that you can play with on this right now. You can see here's the original BEV they call it, or bird's eye view map. And from these bird's eye view maps here, it generated this video for me. You can see it's actually kind of spinning around from some sort of point of view here, but you've got different options here. We can change the random seed. You can change how many frames are rendered, the width of the rendered image, the height of the rendered image, and create all sorts of different scenes. Now you can also create a brand new bird's eye view map here and it will randomly generate a new bird's eye view, but it does say here that it does require a long time. So you can generate this bird's eye view, but if you go to generate the bird's eye view, you can see that it's uh, quite time consuming to do. So this is the random map that it just generated for me. Let's go ahead and render a new video and see what that looks like. And here's the scene that it generated for us from that new topography or bird's eye view map that it just generated for us as it circles around our land plot that we just created. So some pretty cool technology. There's new crazy stuff coming out every single day, whether it's characters learning to be fully autonomous, autonomous self-learning robots, chat GPT with long-term memory, GPT plugins that can build entire websites for you, or just epic AI generated 3D scenes. There is constantly cool new stuff that I'm excited to share with you. And if you wanna stay in the loop with all of the latest tech in AI and virtual reality and augmented reality and just all the cool future tech, head on over to futuretools.io. This is where I curate all of the coolest tools that I come across. I'm adding new tools every single day. And then I've also got a free newsletter. If you click the button here to join the free newsletter, you'll join over 65,000 other people that get the TLDR of AI for the week every Friday. That's right, every single Friday, I send you just my five favorite tools that I've come across for the whole week, a handful of really interesting news articles in the AI space, a handful of YouTube videos, and one cool way to make money with AI. It goes out every single Friday, and it's how tens of thousands of people stay in the loop every single week with AI. So if you're not on that list already, head on over to futuretools.io and join the list. And if you wanna make sure you see more cool AI news and tutorials in your news feed, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Cause I'm going to keep on making videos like this for you and that will ensure you keep on seeing this type of video inside of your newsfeed. Once again, thanks so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>